Hey everybody, welcome to the tutorial that's going to be assisting with um, week five, session five of the virtual art gallery workshop. This is probably the period where everybody gets excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about drawing, um, basic drawing, and more or less uh, focusing in on using the circle method again to draw figures, human figures. Now before we start, um, I want to remind everybody of the tools we're going to be using. We're going to be starting out with just some basic stuff here. Nothing fancy, nothing too uh, over the top. Uh, we need a pencil, so everybody should have a pencil handy. Uh, on the tip of that pencil should be an eraser. If you don't have an eraser, there are these block erasers that you can buy. They're pretty cheap, so be sure and get yourself a, an, a good eraser. Um, your pencil should have one. It'll just work just fine. Now, um, sometimes you'll see me drawing with a mechanical pencil. Um, I want to stress that you don't need this to, to uh, sketch your stuff. This is stuff that I use personally. They come in different types of uh, mechanical pencils. Uh, this mechanical pencil you can buy uh, any type of local store that sells school supplies or art supplies. Um, get yourself a mechanical pencil if you want. You, you fill it with lead, it's refillable. Um, that's one good thing in comparison to a, a wooden pencil. Uh, then they also, we also have this type of pencil you're going to see me using. It's a mechanical pencil, but the lead uh, sharpens in a different way. The lead comes out all the way like this, and uh, you use a special type of sharpener for it, and you'll put that in like this, and you can turn it. Now, you can also purchase these at any local uh, art supply store or where they sell. Um, school supplies usually have some of these, too. So, so if you see me using any, any type of the... Uh, um, types of materials that, that may be a little foreign to you or you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. Um, it's just my preferred choice of, uh, um, of um, uh, craftsmanship. So be sure and just have yourself a pencil, eraser, and a piece of paper. That's it. That's all the supplies you need. Okay? And a sharpener. That's, that's probably a good idea too. So we're talking about basic drawing. Now basic drawing is, is fundamental. There are certain things that you, you, we could go over that, that's going to help you kind of build your art skills a little bit. But I always say this, and I want to stress this to everyone watching the program. You do not need to draw or seek to draw like artists at Disney or Marvel or DC Comics. It's not so much about your ability to draw like a certain type of artist. Anyone that can hold a pencil in their hand and can make marks on a piece of paper technically can draw. So don't say I can't draw. That's just a big, a big no-no here for the workshop. You can draw. You, you can say, and, and it's perfectly fine to say, I, I can't draw like artists at Marvel, or I can't draw like artists at DC Comics. That's perfectly fine to say. But I can't draw, we don't want to say that, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and move to the overhead camera for a little bit, and I want to show you a couple things before we get started. Um, now, I want to remind everybody that, you know, we're using just a basic piece of paper, so get yourself a... Um, you like from a copying piece of paper out of the copying room, uh, basic sheets of paper work. This particular piece of paper has a gray tint to it. That's why you see it. It looks kind of a little bit uh, different, um, but that's perfectly fine, okay? So penciling your page. Now, I showed a couple of these examples earlier. Um, this is a character design um, page that I did for author Nancy Quackenbush in the Pirate Ship Bed Trip. So the characters on this page are colored with watercolor. They're sort of small, but um, these are four of the characters that appear in her book. Now, um, before any page gets finished, you start out with a pencil version. So this is a pencil version of those characters that you, you see there. Um, character design is also a portion of this. So I showed this earlier uh, in the other uh, workshop, but these are the character sketches that I've uh, completed for Nancy's book. This is one of the characters. Notice that I've drawn her uh, frontal, so looking at you in from the side here, okay, so uh, I want to see what the character would look like from different angles. We call this angles. Uh, that's something that you want to learn and keep in mind. Uh, here's another character from her book. This is James. This is the main character. He has a little bunny that accompanies his sidekick here. So all these are character designs. These are, these are just showing the author what we're going to be creating. So while you're drawing your characters, um, we're going to I'm going to show you a couple of methods that you can use. I don't, you don't have to draw it this detailed, okay? This is your super detailed work. I realize that. Here's a pirate from the book. Um, you do not have to draw this detailed. Uh, basic drawing would be fine. Basic shapes. Um, it, like I said, this, this is more detailed, polished stuff that I've created 
And, and you notice I even put the height of the character. So when you're creating a character for your story, when you're drawing your characters, you want to know about them, what they look like. Uh, you can tell a certain demeanor in this character. See how this character looks almost a little shy. Uh, maybe they might be a little sheepish. But if you look at this character, uh, you can tell he, he's, got something, he's got something up his sleeve. He's, he may be a little more sneaky. Um, that kind of thing. So when you design your characters, you can pull off a lot of different emotion and personality in how you draw the characters. Now we can tell this person is very warm, uh, kind, at least she appears to be that way in the drawing. Okay, so now before a page or, or any type of drawing uh, that you have uh, goes from a, a sketch to a completed page, um, we use a storyboard. Now we went over this. This is a storyboard that I used for Nancy Quackenbush's book. This book is titled The Pirate Ship Bed Trip. Now I'll show you the cover to that book here. This is the cover to the book. I, I'm going to have to show you on, my, on the iPad here because um, this, is, this, is what I, not, this is what I laid out for the book and, and, and this isn't in print form yet. The book's going to come out in December. So this is the only way I can really show you. So what I have did here in this book for the cover, I laid the text on here. So this is all my work. Um, the artwork is, is, is by me. Uh, the, the wording uh, is also by me. So whenever we cover in the art gallery workshop, uh, putting the words on a page, we're talking about this exact thing. We have to decide where the text or the words are going to go. And uh, for your interior pages of your book, it's, it's important to keep that in mind as well. Where, where are your uh, words going to go? Now, I want to show you um, a completed page that I did. Now, this is it. This is a completed page for the book, uh, for, for Nancy's book here. And I might be able to show you a better version of it if I turn it sideways. We'll see if we can do that real fast. There we go. There we go. So that's a completed page for her book. Now we can zoom in here. We can see some details that I've done on the ship. You can see little characters on the ship here uh, standing. There's one. There's one. There's one. So before a page gets to this point where it's finished and it's ready to be printed and, and, and um, published into a book, it starts out this way as a little thumbnail sketch. Um, so you'll sketch out what's going to happen using stick figures even. Um, it's not very detailed at all. Then we go into this phase where we pencil the page out. And this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about penciling your characters and, and, and designing your page. So this is the penciled version of this, of this uh, page for the book. And then once I color the page, which is here, I've colored it now. Um, once it's colored, you scan it into the computer, and then you will do some digital work, which ends up looking like this. So you can see the difference from here to here and how the page looks um, before it's published. So how does a page get to this? How do we get to this finished portion of a page where it's ready to be published? Well, it starts out with basic drawing, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about basic drawing, and we're going to be focusing on characters. Now, for the Leaders and Legend Workshop, um, there's a lot of opportunity to draw characters or figures. And you have two options for this workshop that we're putting on. Uh, it's through KVEC, um, but you're going to have a lot of options for um, drawing uh, leaders, uh, be an individual, so you'll have, let's say, uh, a person that you're, draw you're writing about or telling a story about. So the workshop's called Leaders and Legends, and there's all kinds of counties that are participating in this, and what it is is students, you select either a legend, so a superstition or a myth or some sort of folk tale that, that you've heard or are aware of uh, in your region, and then you write about it. Uh, one of the folk tales that we could use probably for Pike County would be maybe the Hatfield-McCoy feud. Um, there's legends about what happened, about pigs being stolen and all this stuff. Or even what's called the devil dogs of, of the, in the mountains of uh, Appalachia. Uh, that's a myth or a legend. There's another superstition that I heard growing up that on Christmas Eve at 12 o'clock midnight, Christmas Eve, supposedly all the animals, so you have like, you know, cows or chickens and all this stuff, they kneel in observance of Christ's birth. So that's a, that's a myth. I mean, uh, superstition or so, not as really a superstition, but a folk tale, I guess you could say. Um, so that would be one thing that you could do for a legend. 
Now for the leader option, students are writing about individuals that's made a difference in their community, uh, someone that has um, contributed to their community in a certain way. Um, maybe for Pike County or Pikeville we could use um, uh, Dr. Hamley who was a, a very influential in getting the large cut through project done. Um, the road used to go all around Pikeville but his efforts in getting the mountain completely removed and the four lane to go straight through that leading to downtown and the coal run and all that um, that was a you know he's pretty influential in getting that done there's a statue of him in the park and uh, so that would be a great option for writing or telling a story about a leader um, but you don't have to have a statue about yourself uh, it could be a, someone let's say in McGoffin County when the large tornadoes came through I'm sure there was a lot of heroes in that and we've read about them in the newspaper and on, on the you know local television uh, WYMT and other things like that we've we've heard about and we've seen leaders who have stepped up during times of trouble so picking uh, which leader you're going to write about may not be determined by a statue in a park okay maybe, so maybe someone has never you know no one's ever heard of this person before but you're going to make them known so students are selecting one of those two options leader or legend now with that comes drawing so with the leader aspect you're going to have people and students sometimes have a hard time drawing people so now we're going to jump into basic drawing we're going to try to work with that we're going to try to um, work with leaders and legends today okay all right so for basic drawing whenever you're putting together a person uh, the, you want to use the Marvel method and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up a picture that I chose of Abraham Lincoln. Now there's two types of drawing um, uh, approaches to this. First is a realistic version which is what we have here and the other is a more cartoon version which is what we have uh, coming up right about, well I think it's before this, let's see. I did, okay, we'll have to pull it up in a second but the more cartoon version of Abraham Lincoln. So those are our two options, okay? So let's focus on drawing a more realistic thing. Now the Marvel method begins with circles. It deals a lot with circles. So you lightly press down with your pencil and you make shapes. So I'm going to make shapes that look like this. Um, maybe an oval here for the, for the chin. You may have another circle here. And then maybe for the neck you have um, another uh, oval here for the neck. And you can see how I'm building this structure more than anything as a blueprint for what I'm about to do. So here is the general shape of this uh, drawing here. You can see how the circles connect, they overlap, the ovals overlap. And the reason we do that is after we have this we go back and add detail. Now for the face we're going to draw a line coming down which is our center line. This is the center line of the face here. So when you're drawing um, use a center line. This helps you to understand where the eyes will be. So the eyes will be about right here, the nose will be about right here, and the mouth will be about right here. Okay? So we can see how this kind of looks like a person. After we have all these shapes and things, we can go back and start adding detail. So I'm just going to draw what I'm seeing. And you can see how I'm adding stuff onto the shapes that I already have. So this could be an ear here, his chin starts here. See how I'm tracing and I'm just I'm basically following the lines that I created earlier, okay? And I'm making the shapes. Now you may have to go back and erase, so that's why I press down really lightly on using my pencil, okay? All right, so now we have the general shape of Abraham Lincoln's head. That's what we have right here. And I can erase these marks on the sides here. I don't need them anymore. Uh, they help me, though, to, to guide me where to put my um, general shape. So he's got an ear sticking out. Uh, beyond the chin here, so it's going to be about right here. So when you're drawing, use these circles and these ovals to help to guide you. Center line of the face, eyes, nose, mouth. Okay. So now we work on the hairline a little bit. So I may draw this line going up and around. So when you're drawing your, your leader, um, you want to just try to capture some of the features about that person. It doesn't necessarily have to be a realistic drawing like we're working on now it's going to have you know be more cartoon like so the students that are working on this project or if you're at home drawing and you're you've been practicing a lot watching the tutorials um, don't get overwhelmed by a realistic version of a drawing just try to capture the basic uh, um, features of a person such as Abraham Lincoln he has sort of large ears okay 
That's a feature that you can see in Abraham Lincoln. Those large ears that he has, and this artist that did this depiction over here really brought out those ears. You can see it. Another thing is his nose. He has a, he has a pretty big nose. It comes down. Um, so we want to make sure we get that in there. So there's the nose. Um, and then his, his eyes, he's, he has large eyebrows. That's a big feature of Abraham Lincoln is his eyebrows. And so you see how I'm just adding in the detail now over top of using these lines and such, okay? So his eyes will be about right here. This is darkened in more. And his other eye will be about right here. These lines help to guide me, though. I can tell where things are going to appear on my drawing. So as you're drawing, use those shapes to help guide you. They're going to be your best friend when you're putting together a drawing. Um, the circles and the ovals that you created, okay? All right, so now we got the, the uh, lines for his, uh, his cheeks here. He has a very distinct cheekbones, you see. They, they, they are really pronounced. That means that they stick out quite a bit, right? We want to make sure we show that. And then his mouth, he's got a slight smile to his mouth here. It's not a, and you notice how the artist has just used black for the top lip. So we want to try to do that. And, you know, students have a hard time drawing lips, but if you keep it simple, um, don't over, overthink it. Just use basic lines to put together your piece, and you'll be fine, okay? So his cheekbone, make sure those eyebrows are really pronounced. So you can see how the features of Abraham Lincoln are starting to come together in my drawing, okay? That's what you want to capture in your drawing. You want to capture the basic features of whoever it is you're writing about. You can even, uh, sometimes for legends, you have people in, in the legends, and uh, so you're gonna have to draw people a lot in this, in this workshop. Um, so this is a realistic um, depiction of Abraham Lincoln. Um, it is a lot more difficult than drawing a cartoon version of Abraham Lincoln, which is what a lot of us is going to do. But I wanted to start out with a realistic version because what it does is it helps you to understand how these circles how these shapes come together. Now notice I had the oval for the neck here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just following my line that I use for the oval. I'm adding stuff on top of it, of course, like uh, his shirt, his collar. Uh, he has the tie here that we see, more of a bow, actually, a bow tie sort of. Um, so we'll just add some sort of shape in there. Notice I'm not doing it as detailed as what we're using here to go by. The reason for that is just to show you that it doesn't have to be so detailed. Your work can be simplified. Um, I don't want people to get overwhelmed by this. Um, a lot of students, when they see uh, me draw like something more realistic, they get very overwhelmed. I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. Well, it's not more or less about your ability to draw as it is about your ability to tell a story with pictures, okay? So don't get overwhelmed by that. So we're gonna put his glasses hanging on his nose here. You can see about where they are on the face. They're hanging down below his eyes a little bit. So we want to put that on there. And while you're drawing, remember, when you're using these shapes to go by, um, try to press down lightly at first and then sketch it out more um, by pressing down harder after you know where you want to put your lines, okay? That's really important. So first press down very lightly till you know where you want to go with your lines and then put those on there. So. So here's uh, the glasses. We have his glasses on him here. Uh, now we can work on the eyes a little bit more. Uh, like I said, though, do not get overwhelmed by what you're doing. I know this is a lot more detailed than what a lot of students are going to draw their uh, characters like, but this is just to help you to see that you can use this circle method to create your characters. So there we have a version of Abraham Lincoln. It doesn't look exactly like this one. That's perfectly fine. Um, but you can tell this is Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you can tell by his ears. You can tell by the stru structure of his uh, beard and his hair. Um, so that's what I want you to focus on. Just capture the, the basic features of the individual you're drawing, okay? It's real important. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and finish this out a little bit. Now, what we're going to do next, though, is something entirely different. We're going to draw Abraham Lincoln again but we're going to actually draw him more cartoon-like, okay? Uh, we're going to draw him as a um, 
cartoon instead of a um, more realistic version. Okay. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and bring that up. So we have this finished piece. It looks like Abraham Lincoln. Um, you can tell it, it's Abraham Lincoln when you look at it. And, uh, you know, it's, that's what you want to capture whenever you're creating these, okay? All right, so I'm going to bring up a, a version of Abraham Lincoln we can draw for the cartoon version. All right, we'll pull that out of the way. Now I'm using the Internet to look at this. Use the Internet a lot. Um, you know, if, whenever you're wanting to draw uh, something, um, look up how a person looks. It's really good to use the uh, Internet. Um, look for pictures of that person and find a cartoon version if you're looking for it. Uh, maybe one of the persons that you're writing about is going to be someone that is um, well known nationally as well. Um, Abraham Lincoln did spend some time in Kentucky. So, um, you know, that's an option for you to do that. All right, so I'm looking for a cartoon version of Abraham Lincoln here. I think I found one that might work. So we'll, we're going to go with uh, this one here, okay? So we have Abraham Lincoln. You notice his nose and his ears are already pronounced. So when you start out, um, notice the shape of him as well. When you start out, use shapes that help guide you. So I'm going to use an oval for the head, okay? That's, that's going to take up the whole head portion. His nose. So I'll draw this out coming. All right, remember those, those cheekbones, high cheekbones he has. He's got um, large eyebrows, so we want to make sure and keep those in there. So now we're going to put a hat on him this time, okay? So when you're, when you're sketching out for a cartoon version, it's way different than a realistic version. Um, you can draw more features pronounced than, than, a, than a realistic version is, and so it works really well that way. So on top of the oval that I just drew, I'm drawing his hat, okay? Um, stick up like this, so he's got his hat on. Um, go back down here, start working on his, on his beard, following my oval, see? The oval helps to guide me every, every bit of the time. So um, I'm gonna draw his beard coming down to his chin, right about there. Remember, he has big ears, so I may draw a big ear over here on the side of the oval. You see how that's working? Um, his nose comes out. I can get rid of this piece of the oval because the nose is uh, going to be blocking that out there. All right, so his, his eyes may be right here. Now you can draw the cartoon version of his eyes a little bit. Uh, you can give him those bags under his eyes. So when you're drawing the cartoon version, it's the same basic principle as a realistic version. You want to capture certain features of the person you're drawing, okay? That's the most important thing is to capture the basic features of the person you're drawing. So we'll give his little chin here. There's his beard, his nose. Abraham has a sort of a big nose. He has big ears, and uh, we want to capture that in our drawing. The bag's under his eyes a little bit. So you can see how this kind of works. Put his neck. Now I'm going to draw a little bit different than this version over here, as you can see. Um, now for his body, you, you start out with an oval for the shoulders, right? And we're, you see how the body's smaller than the head here. Um, we're going to draw another oval for, for his body here. Okay, an oval for the waist. And then he's got his legs are together. They, make, they sort of make a, a, here you can see it better. They're together, his legs are. So we want to draw that shape coming down, something like this. And see how his feet are sticking out on both sides. So we'll draw an oval this way and an oval this way. Now we're going to work on his arms. So notice he's holding his jacket in this one. So we ha we'll draw an oval coming down to the... Always uh, when you're drawing the arms, and I'll show you on a separate piece of paper real fast here. When you're drawing arms, remember, let's say this is the oval for the body. Okay, here's the shoulders. Here's the waist. Okay, when you're drawing the arms, use circles for the shoulders, draw an oval to the, always to the elbow. See how I've done this? It's going down to the elbow, and another circle, okay? And then another oval, elongated oval for the upper arm, then a circle for the wrist, and then a circle, larger circle for the hands. So you can see how this sort of forms a body, and they make these little wooden characters here 
that you can use to go by. These, these, you can find these in just about any art supply store or um, even any type of large chain store that has any type of art supplies in it. And what this little wooden character does is it helps you to see what a person would look like So you put in a certain position. So you can have the, the person setting down, so we'll bend the legs. You can have them reading a newspaper even. And you notice on this figure how it has circles for the joints. You know your joints like your wrists and your elbows. And the head is oval. So this could be a person sitting down reading a newspaper. See how that works? And what you would do, maybe you want to draw it from this angle. Maybe you want to draw it looking up at him from the floor. So you draw it from that angle. Or looking down from him, from the ceiling or her. You draw it from this angle. So this, these little figurines help so much in get drawing figures, okay? So I'm not saying go buy one, but your art, I bet you anything, if you have art class, go to your art room and ask your teacher to see the model, the figuring model uh, to draw with. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing with this. We've added circles for the elbows, circles for the wrists, circles for the hands. And what you can do once you've drawn all this is go back later, let's say the neck is here. So you go back later, and I'll use my more um, uh, darker pencil to do that. You can add a shirt onto the person. Here's the shirt. You can put shoulder, you know, put the shirt sleeves here, and then this goes into the arm. So all of this will be uh, colored in. You can see how that works. And you can see how this kind of resembles a shirt on a person now, okay? So use these shapes to help guide you. Press down very lightly on the paper. Um, don't, don't press down hard because you're going to have to go back and, and draw over it. So let's go back to our Abraham Lincoln sketch and let's finish it out now, okay? So he has big eyebrows like we said earlier. We've got those in there. His high cheekbones are here. There's his lip, his beard. He has a very unique beard. Okay, it goes down below around his chin, and he's got this big nose here, right? Okay, so now for his body, we've used ovals and shapes to create it. We've used one oval here for the upper arm. See how this arm comes down and bends up? Let's draw a circle for the elbow. Here's the upper arm. Now I'll draw a circle for the hand. Over here, I'm going to draw the upper arm, an oval, circle for the elbow, an oval for the upper arm and a circle for the hand. Now do you see how I've created all the pieces that I need here? And probably a good idea is I'll draw the rest of it in a pen so you can see that way it's darker. Don't use it, you'll still be using a pencil though. So we have uh, his collar here, okay. His, his hands will be holding the uh, jacket. So we draw the fingers in there. And same on this side. Make sure you draw his fingers in, and his thumb, thumb here. The jacket's coming into his hands there. Okay. And now you can follow the rest of the drawing. Follow your circles. So I would still be drawing with pencil right now, but it works better this way to show you um, how this works in pen. Okay. So the jacket comes out. Follow your ovals down, back up. Here's where the jacket ends the sleeve the bend in the elbow you see how this works now um, it's important to use ovals the circle method really helps you in, in drawing your characters for your book okay or if you're home and you're just sketching around um, you know you can use it for that as well so let's darken in his tie okay and um, now we're going to work on his legs so the jacket wraps around the legs so we're going to go ahead and finish this out down to his knees. There's his on both sides here. Notice the waist. I'm following my circles is all I'm doing. A straight line up the middle here. And then we seal it off at the bottom with two lines. That's where his pant legs end. And then we can draw his shoes here. And just following my oval, adding a little detail in as I go. That's all I'm doing, okay? Following the shapes that I created. It's so important to remember to do that because it helps you in guiding you, okay, um, to what it is you're drawing. So this is our Abraham Lincoln uh, cartoon sketch. 
and we can see how this compares to uh, the more realistic sketch here. It's totally different, see? More realistic sketch, cartoon sketch. I bet a lot of students are going to go this route, which is perfectly fine. Um, just be sure, though, to, to try the circle method when you're, when you're drawing these characters, okay? All right, so we'll sketch out really fast another uh, character for you for the legend portion. Um, this, this, of course, is uh, using the same type of um, method as we did for um, Abraham Lincoln here. Um, but this is going to be way, much more cartoon-like, okay? And for the purpose of this, we're going to use um, one, of the, one of the mythic legend creatures here. Um, this is going to be the, the Wavering, I think is how you pronounce it, or Dragon. Um, so when there, there's no dragon legends that I know of in Eastern Kentucky, but there are dragon legends in the world. Um, so I'm going to draw this little character. So we start out with an oval for the head. Okay, this is the head here. Um, I'm drawing this portion right there, his head. I uh, wish I could zoom in a little more. Maybe I can. There we go. All right, so now for his body, you see how it comes in. It almost makes an egg shape for his body. So connecting with the head, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to make this egg shape for his body here. Okay, see how I've done that? Just an egg shape trap oval. You may have to make strange shapes at first to get the basic outline, but that's what we're really shooting for, basic outline. Notice his legs come down on the sides like this. Make a little oval here up to the body. He's got another leg here. Now, it may, you know, when you draw your version of whatever it is you're looking at, it may look you know, slightly or a whole lot different than, than the subject you're looking at. That's okay. There's no problem with that if it looks different. Um, you put your own personal touch on it. That's, that's perfectly fine, okay? So I'm adding the parts of his belly here. He has a little eye right there. We're drawing that in. His face comes down almost like a serpentine-like up to the top of his head and down in his body, okay? Now we're going to draw the wings. Um, for the wings, I'll start out with just straight lines coming up on each side of his body, something like this, okay? And then once I have that, I'm going to bring them down. I'm right here on this line. I'm coming up and down. Up over here. Notice mine are a little bit larger than the drawing we're looking at. That's perfectly fine again. All right, so now I'm going to draw the other line for his wing. This is part of his wing here. It hangs lower. Notice this, this one hangs lower than uh, the other one, okay? comes up, down. So using the, the, the circle method works wonderful, but there might be some pieces of a drawing um, that you, you can't use that in, So such as the wing here. Uh, there's a lot of strange shapes and different types of uh, shapes here that makes up the wing. So I'm drawing this other line for this one now coming down. Starting back over here, draw the line coming up to his wing. There's that line coming down, back up. And then I can seal this one off as well, see? So I'm just following what I see over here is what I'm doing. So use the internet. Go onto YouTube, look up whatever it is you're, you want to, you're writing about or the person that you're drawing, a, you know, writing your story about and um, try your best to find examples of drawings that resemble uh, whatever it is you're, you've chosen to write about, okay? So his tail comes down like this, his feet here, he's got a little uh, toenails there, draw those on. So now we have our little wavering. I think that's how you pronounce it. If it's wrong, I apologize. But so our little character here. So see how we've we've used the circle method uh, to to create our character, the cartoon character. So this would be for a legend. Now a legend could be about a person, a haunted house, or something like that. And then we have for the legend here. An example we've done, and we have a leader here. An example we've done. Now remember, you don't have to draw detailed such as this. You can keep it very simple. But as long as you capture the certain features, like for Abraham's ear, his beard, his nose, and of course, you know, the cheekbones, okay? Like that. As long as you capture certain features of a person, you're going to be absolutely fine, okay? That's what we're looking for. Capture the certain features of a person. And it's easy to do. Um, just remember that you don't have to draw really detailed work, okay, in order to make this successful. 
So good luck with everything. I hope that the, your process is going well. Remember, come to theholler.org to see these tutorials. We even have a lot of tutorials from the last workshop still saved on here. So go back and watch those too. We had more examples with drawing using the circle method where we drew different types of things such as um, Link from uh, Legends of Zelda all the way to uh, My Little Pony. And we're going to be doing some of that in here uh, for this workshop too. But for Leaders and Legends, we need to focus on using the circle method. There's going to be a lot of human characters in this uh, series. So be sure and use that to construct your uh, characters with, okay? Thanks so much for watching the tutorial. Be on the lookout for more. I'll let you know in the sessions when they're going to be uh, uh, taking place. Uh, so thank you for watching the art workshop and, and uh, keep drawing.